Hi, I am going to discuss particle in a one dimensional box or potential well. The particle in a one dimensional box problem is one of the basic problems that we study at the beginning of a quantum mechanics course and it is an idealistic problem. But the results that we obtain out of this problem can be very well extended to very realistic conditions to which a quantum object will be subjected to. Towards the end of the derivation, we will be able to get the wave function of such a particle which is trapped in this one dimensional box. Such a wave function is called eigenfunction. We will also be able to derive the energy eigenvalues for such a particle and we will see the quantization of the energy eigenvalues of such a particle. The particle that we talk about here could be any quantum object such as an electron or any such similar particle. We will begin by solving the Schrodinger equation and applying the boundary conditions we will be able to arrive at the solution of the Schrodinger's wave equation. The solution of the Schrodinger's wave equation is the wave function representing such a particle in one dimensional box and this wave function is called as the eigenfunction. Let us begin by writing the Schrodinger's wave equation for such a particle. Let us begin by writing the Schrodinger's wave equation for such a particle in a one dimensional box. We know that the Schrodinger's wave equation is a second derivative We know that the Schrodinger's wave equation is a second order differential equation. So d square psi by dx square plus 2 times the mass over h cut square e minus v psi is equal to 0 is the Schrodinger's time independent wave equation. Now this wave equation is applicable to the problem under question which is the particle in a one dimensional box problem. The box that we are talking about is an idealistic condition where the dimensions of the box is only one dimension that is it is extending from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to a particular length called let's say L. Now the particle is trapped inside this box and it has impenetrable walls on either side. That means the particle cannot be at the wall. It cannot exist, touch the wall and it can only be free to move within the box. Now the wave function representing such a particle let us call as psi. By solving this Schrodinger's time independent wave equation we will be able to arrive at this wave function that represents this quantum object or the particle. Therefore the particle is inside the one dimensional box and hence the wave function that represents this particle cannot be zero. So inside the box the wave function is not equal to zero. It does not vanish within the box. The particle is a free particle therefore the potential inside the box is zero. At the boundary x is equal to zero the potential becomes infinite. At the other boundary x is equal to l also 
the potential is infinite. On either side, outside the box, the particle cannot exist because the particle has energy E, which is way much less than the infinite potential barrier. Therefore, outside the wave function is zero on either side. The potential outside is also infinite. So the particle can never be found outside under these conditions. Now these are the boundary conditions for this problem and we are going to solve the differential equation based on this boundary conditions. Now, since this is a free particle inside the box, this parameter V should go to zero. So we can rewrite the Schrodinger's time independent wave equation for the given problem as for a free particle, the differential equation becomes d square psi by dx square plus 2m over h squared, h cut squared rather, multiplied by the energy psi is equal to 0. Therefore, this is the Schrodinger's equation which we have to solve to arrive at the solution which is the eigenfunction of the problem. By applying these boundary conditions, we will be able to solve this equation. We have to start solving this by assuming a trial wave function for psi. Let us say psi is equal to a sin kx plus b cos kx. We know that k is called the wave number which is 2 pi over lambda. Now we have to apply these two boundary conditions on the solution to get some of these constants a and b. I am going to use the other side of the board to do the further derivation. First, let us do at x is equal to 0. The first boundary condition is at x is equal to 0. The wave function is 0 because it cannot exist at the boundary. So, psi is equal to 0 at the boundary as well. So, at x is equal to 0, psi is equal to 0. So, our trial wave function psi is equal to a sin kx plus b cos x becomes 0 on the left side because psi is equal to 0. A sin k of x, x is equal to 0. So, x plus b cos k of 0 because x is equal to 0. Now, sin 0 is 0. So, the first term, term is 0 plus the second term has b, an unknown constant, multiplied by cos of k0 is cos 0. So, this is 1. So, b into 1. So effectively, the constant b is nothing but 0. So automatically, we have been able to eliminate the constant b. If this is 0, the whole term, second term becomes 0. So our trial wave function now is nothing but psi is equal to a sin k x. Now we have reduced our trial wave function from two terms to only one term. That is a sin kx. Now we can apply the second boundary condition that is at x is equal to L. At x is equal to L, psi is 0. Therefore, applying this to this equation or this equation for that matter, 0 is equal to A multiplied by sin k into x is now l. 
because it is at x is equal to l. Now this implies a sin kl is equal to 0. Since b was already eliminated by having b is equal to 0 condition, a cannot be 0 because both constants, if they are 0, that would mean wave function is 0, but wave function is non-zero inside the box. Therefore, we have to take a not equal to 0. That would imply sin k l as 0. The second term alone is 0 because the first term is non-zero here. If the second term alone is 0, sin of theta becomes 0 only when the theta which is kl here is an integral times pi because the sine function as we all know goes to 0 for 0 then for pi then for 2 pi then for 3 pi then for 4 pi so on and so forth for any n integer value of n sine function goes to 0 so sine n pi is 0 that means kl is equal to n pi this is the first step of the derivation Therefore, now we will be able to write the wave number k for this given problem is n pi by L. So, from this expression, we are arriving at this very important result on the wave number k. The wave number in the given expression, psi is equal to a sin kx is therefore k is equal to n pi by L. Right, now we can continue our derivation from where we left off. Right, we have obtained now the trial wave function to be a into sine ax. We have found that k for the given problem becomes n pi over l, where l is the length of the box. Therefore, we can write our general solution as a times sine instead of k, we can write n pi over l of x. Now still we are left with the constant a. We have to find out the value for this constant for the given problem by applying the given boundary conditions. Now we know one thing in the quantum uh, we know that the wave function obeys what is called a normalization condition. For those of you who are not familiar with the concept of normalization of a wave function, please refer to my video on significance of the wave function where I have talked about normalization, normalization of the wave function in some detail. A wave function is said to be normalized if it obeys this condition that integral between the limits minus infinity to, to plus infinity wave function and its complex conjugate product for one dimension this is just dx is equal to 1 that is if you multiply the wave function and its con complex conjugate what you get is called psi square which is probability density in this present case because psi is only a sin kx that is if you integrate this quantity which is probability density mod psi square is probability density if you integrate it between the limits minus infinity to plus infinity because this is a one dimensional problem i am using only dx otherwise i will have to use dx dy dz or dv that is volume element right hand side is always one this tells us that there is a definite probability which is equal to one of finding the prop particle anywhere between minus infinity to, to plus infinity in space. That is what normalization means. So this is called normalization condition in quantum mechanics. Please refer to my video on physical significance of the wave function or significance of the wave function where I have discussed normalization condition that the any wave function in quantum mechanics must obey. By applying the normalization condition to the wave function because if this wave function has to represent a quantum object then it has to obey the normalization condition. Therefore, this wave function being only a real function where the complex part is 0, 
straight away we can just uh, square this function to get the mod size square and then we can integrate it between the limits 0 and L because our box is between 0 and L where the particle is kept. So for this box we can integrate the wave function between 0 to L mod size square gx is equal to 1 would give integral between 0 to L a square sin square n pi over L x dx is equal to 1. Now this can be solved, integrated by taking the formula cos 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sin squared theta. So sin squared theta is equal to 1 plus cos 2 theta over 2. So we can use this identity here to convert the sin square theta into a cos 2 theta form. Therefore, we can write this integral as integral 0 to L of constant is taken out of the integral as a square. The sin square n pi by L x is written as 1 plus cos 2 n pi by L x dx is equal to 1 on the right hand side and this 2 is going out of the integral as a square by 2. Right, we can continue further from there by writing a square by 2 integral 0 to L 1 into dx is dx plus integral 0 to L cos twice n pi over L dx is equal to 1. Now the first term is integral of dx is x by applying the upper limit we will get L by applying the limit lower limit we will get 0 so effectively we will get only L. So a squared by 2 x apply between L and 0 plus the second term if we integrate what we will get is integration of cos 2 n pi by L is nothing but sin 2 n pi by L 1 by 2 and then n pi by L applied over the limits L and 0. Now sin of 2 n pi is 0 for any integer value n. So the second term is going to be 0 whatever be the value of x. Whatever be the value of x, the second term will go to 0. So the second term vanishes. Effectively, we are left with only the first term. On the right hand side, there is a 1. So this is whole thing is equal to 1. Therefore, what we are left with is a square by 2 into L is equal to 1. This would mean our a is equal to square root of 2 by L. This is a very important stage. That is, we have evaluated the constant involved in the expression for wave function. This constant is nothing but the amplitude of the 
wave representing the particle. Now, what wave represents this particle? The de Broglie wave. Right. So, we started with a trial wave function and we have arrived at the wave function for the particle in a one dimensional box as square root of 2 over L sine m pi by L of x. Now, naturally, the integer n, the presence of integer n tells us that different wave functions are possible for different quantum numbers n for this thing. Therefore, a wave function now can be suffixed with an n. So, psi of n is the eigen function. We all know eigen is a German word meaning characteristic. So, this is a characteristic function for a quantum object trapped in a one dimensional box of length L. That means it can have different wave functions for different values of n. Now, we are still, still left with the calculation of energy eigenvalues for this particle. What energy values that this particle can take is given by the energy eigenvalue expression which we have to derive. We have already derived the wave number expression as n pi by L. This is wave number. We know that the wave number is related to what is called the wavelength of the particle which is 2 pi by lambda. Therefore, we can start writing that here 2 pi over lambda is equal to n pi by L. if you cancel out pi's two over lambda is equal to n over l we know that this wavelength is de Broglie wavelength de Broglie wavelength lambda is the Planck constant over momentum p therefore two over lambda is two over h over p. On the right hand side, we have n over l. So, 2 times momentum over the Planck constant is nothing but n over l. So, the momentum alone is nothing but n h by 2 l. Now, we need to calculate the energy. We know that for the free particle, the entire energy is kinetic energy E and the expression for that is P square by 2M. So, P square is equal to 2M E. So, to arrive at energy, we have to substitute this here. So, if you square the momentum, we get P square is equal to N square H square over 2 times L, sorry, 4, four times L square. Now you substitute 2 Me on the left hand side, you get N square H square over 4 L square. Now we want energy expression, so we write here energy E is equal to N square H square over 2M multiplied by 4L square. This is nothing but N square H square over 8ML square. 
Now, since the involvement of the quantum number n here, the energy also can take different values for different values of the integer n. Therefore, we have E n is equal to n square h square over 8 times mass into length square. Now, this is the expression called energy eigenvalue. Again, the word eigen means characteristic. So, these are the characteristic values for energy that the particle can take. So, for different values of n, the particle can take different energies. That means the particle is in different quantum states. So, for each value of n, the particle will have one eigenfunction representing it and it is in one energy state. Now, let us proceed and try to understand a bit about the eigenfunction and the energy eigenvalue. Right. So, these are the results that we have obtained so far in the derivation. We have started with the particle in a one dimensional box. We wrote the trial wave function based on the Schrodinger's equation and then we applied the boundary conditions to solve and get the eigenfunction which is the wave function representing this particle present in the one dimensional box. This eigenfunction has the amplitude square root over 2, square root of 2 over L and the quantization emanates from the condition of the sinusoidal function vanishing at every n pi. And then we further use the known value hypothesis of de Broglie to arrive at the energy expression as n squared h squared over 8 m L squared which is clearly showing the quantization of the energy of the particle. That means the particle cannot take any arbitrary energy. It can only take specified values of energy based on the value of n. Therefore, now we will proceed to discuss in some more detail about the energy eigenvalues as well as the eigenfunction of the particle. If we try to plot the eigenfunction for the particle, in the box for n is equal to 1 the amplitude is square root of 2 over L for n is equal to 1 it is sine pi that means the eigen right so when n is equal to 1 we have the wave function which extends that is 0 to pi extending between the dimension of the box L when n is equal to 2, this is 2 pi, that is the entire wavelength. So, this is going to be like this. When n is equal to 3, 1 and half wavelengths are going to be enclosed within the box. So, these are the different states of the particle within the box. So, this is psi corresponding to 1, this is n corresponding to 1, this is n corresponding to and n corresponding to 3 and so on and so forth we can plot. Now if you look at the energies E1 is going to be h square over 8 m l square. E2 is going to be 2 square is 4 so 4 times the E1 value. E3 is going to be 3 squared that is 9 times the E1 value and so on and so forth. So we can clearly see the first energy level E1, then 4 times the E1 is the second energy level which is E2, the third energy level E3 is 9 times E1 and so on and so forth. So the gap is going to be become larger and larger as N increases. This is the nature of the energy values acquired by the particle in a one dimensional box. Now the wave function as such does not have any physical meaning. It is not a physically measurable quantity in quantum mechanics whereas if we can measure the probability density it is nothing but mod psi square. So if we plot the probability density then what we are going to have is 
like this for psi 1. Then for psi 2, this is going to be like this, squaring it. The negative also becomes positive. And for psi 3, this is going to be. Now, this is going to give us some physical interpretation rather than just the psi. So, this is mod psi 1 squared. This is mod psi 2 squared. This is uh, mod psi 3 squared and so on and so forth. We can plot. Now, this gives us a probability. Because if you integrate probability density over the entire volume, uh, then you will get probability. So as such, mod psi square is nothing but probability density. So this is giving us a physical uh, meaning actually. Because you can see that for n is equal to one state, the probability of finding the particle is maximum at the center. That is exactly at L by 2. Because this is the total length L, 0 to L. Now, in the same position, when n is equal to 2, the probability goes to 0. Whereas, equally on the left and right side, it has equal probabilities to the left and right of the l is equal to l by 2 point, x is equal to l by 2 point. Now, for n is equal to 3 state, you have 2 points where it vanishes to 0, the probability, and 3 points where it is maximum. So this is very interesting. You can clearly see that for the particle at different energy values at different quantum states, it has very interesting probabilities of being found within the box. So this is another interesting aspect of the particle which is confined. So the results of particle one in one dimensional box have varied applications in quantum mechanics, but the results themselves are very interesting because we can clearly see that the energy eigenfunction brings in the quantum number n and then when we calculate the energy eigenvalues we, said, we see that that is clearly quantized or discretized and uh, the particle cannot take any arbitrary energy and only specified energy values are allowed so the energy is quantized and uh, when we plot the amplitude of the wave function the probability amplitude as well as the probability density we see interesting results emanating out. So we have been able to derive the eigenfunction as well as the energy eigenvalues of the particle in a one dimensional box. We see that from this uh, discussion on particle in a one dimensional box that the energy of the particle in a one dimensional box is quantized and the energy eigenvalues are given by the expression n squared h squared over 8 ml squared and we have also plotted the probability density and we have been able to physically interpret the same. Thank you.